it's a public safety decision. Last year, we tried to uh, wheedle it down to one lane on Marion, but the amount of pedestrians that we're gonna have um, in that central area, it's just a public safety decision. We're gonna go to the downtown merchants and explain to them that um, we're not trying to take anything away from them and we would love for them to you know, decorate and come outside and set up all kinds of tables, do whatever they wanna do for that evening to captivate the crowd that will be down there. But um, you know, we're, we're, gonna have a, we're gonna have a big crowd on that corner and we just can't contain them uh, on the site. So it's, gonna, it's going. Um, I appreciate all the help, staff and, and the committee. Um, we're really getting into it. Irma kind of, you know, got us a little bit dialed down, but we're back in full swing now. So it should be a really good, good night down there. And then the next weekend will be the, um, the Christmas parade weekend. So we'll have two big holiday weekends downtown. And this weekend is the Harboritaville event for Jim Morris, uh, Sharon Morris put together with the chamber. So that'll be Saturday at the Tiki and it's homecoming for Charlotte High. So there's gonna be a lot going on this weekend as well. And the home show I think is at the event center. What a hip place. Very uh, hip. hip. <laughs> <laughs> Come get your hip. <laughs> Uh, Dragon Boat, yes, Dragon Boat races too. I mean, it's going to be going on all over town. Well, Dragon Boat's so. next week. Next week. Two weeks. Two weeks. 28th, okay. Yeah. That, how are we, right? Okay, 28th, mm -hmm. Dragon Boat. You know, Kathy's out there paddling and practicing. <laughs> she retired. She retired. She's not yeah. Retired. <laughs> um, I think that's it for my announcements. That's it. Uh, Jaha, council member comments. Um, I want to see if it's possible if we could explore wayfinding signs for the parking garage. Several downtown businesses say that though we have a garage, no one knows how to get there. It's not in like in their consciousness. When people drive through town, they don't know to go back to Herald Court to park there. And is there any way to assist with that? Because they say that that's an impediment to some people taking advantage of business downtown is not knowing that there is a garage. We have wayfinding signs, but you, so you want more? Or or, or, or or maybe one on Olympia, possibly, somehow identifying that the parking garage is there. Because I know people who are on this side of Olympia, like let's say if you're looking at Sandra's and you're looking at okay. Carmelo's and that type, people don't know where to park, really. And they don't know if there was a garage. If they knew the garage was there, they would easily park the garage and cross the street. I just know how that could be. I know we, we put up signs on the outside of the, uh, right on the building too, the blue parking, the circle with the P. Did we not, we did that. I mean, we, we, we've tried. I think, I think the point is they need to be visible from the street as you're driving yeah. so yeah. that you're not rubbernecking the yeah, seat people side. can't see it. We did such a good job of disguising it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's, a, our, it's a it was our goal. Parking yeah. Yeah. It's our goal. It was, it's a gorgeous building that, it's a parking garage that nobody knows it's a parking garage. So. It's a skateboard ramp. Well, uh, well, before before we we'll bring it back as an agenda item to show you what we have. All right. Okay. Do you, you know how long it took to get those wayfinding signs oh, wow. up? Oh. You may get them in like I, I, it was fifteen really years. Real. That's real. Yeah, it was terrible. Maybe a fifteen-year process to get <laughs> what you just asked for. That's funny. We'll bring yeah, it all. back as an agenda and show okay. you what we have. Yeah, let's take an inventory. All right. And I think at one point, too, we decided to do a consistent blue circle with a P because we had a couple of different things yep. out there pointing toward parking. We'll have it on there. That's all. That's it? Yes. Okay. Lynn? Uh, a couple quick things. Uh, I had a phone call from a citizen who asked if we could please put the city trash and recycling pickup schedule on the website. Um, apparently there's something on the website that's not very easy to read and they wanted to know if we could um, put, since it's a regular ongoing schedule, if we could add that to the public works page of the website. Is that something that can be done, Mr. Keeney? Good, thank you. Um, I already mentioned the Boaters Alliance, we're having a strategic planning session meeting on November 16th. It'll, it'll be from 10 o'clock to one o'clock and um, information will be forthcoming and as soon as I get it, I will forward it to Howard to share with everyone. Um, but certainly all council members and all community people are welcome to attend that. Um, I attended a meeting last week for the block party. It's full speed ahead. They're um, moving ahead with all of their plans and 
they're well underway in getting entertainment secured and all kinds of other good things. So um, just want to let you know that that is ongoing. They've already got their application in, which they're way far, uh, far ahead of the curve from last year. So um, everything is on, speed, on, on track for that. And um, I just wanted to bring up the um, Regional Planning Council's resolution that, that you sent to us last night. Did everyone get that? No. I did not. I only said you're, you're the rep. Okay. Um, this, and I, unfortunately, I can't attend the meeting tomorrow, but I didn't even know that this was going on. The, the Southwest Florida Regional Planning Council is planning on bringing two resolutions forward to the members at the meeting tomorrow. Three counties. Well, the, but the RPC is actually filing resolutions that they want the members to approve. And Lee County has filed a resolution to oppose those two resolutions. Um, the Lee County Board of Commissioners is adamantly opposed to the, the resolutions the Regional Planning Council is bringing up. Regional Planning Council is trying to usurp the way the, um, the interlocal agreement is written because the interlocal agreement between the six counties is very loosely written and there's nothing in it that basically states the counties that are members cannot withdraw from it. So what they're trying to do is file resolutions that override that and make it a little more stringent that the counties that are um, ha that have already expressed their concern about the organization and the, their intent to withdraw would not be allowed. So it, it's um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this. And I was not aware this was on their agenda tomorrow, but because of the legislative delegation and two other commitments we have tomorrow. Um, I can't be at this meeting, so um, I'll let everybody know what happens with this. We did, just while we were sitting here, we got um, an email from, I hope everybody got this, from Lee County's county manager. So you may want to look at that. They're going to oppose. Please find attached a resolution. That's what this is, probably. Yeah, yeah this is. This is a resolution from the Lee County Com Board of Commissioners that um, yeah, that's probably that they oppose um, the two the resolutions changes. that the RPC is bringing forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you you did get that. I okay. didn't get it. We just got it today at ten fifty four. Okay. Well, I'll let everybody know what happens with it. I'll find I, out. I didn't get it. I mean, do you think it's? In, I mean, I, did, it, I didn't receive it. You didn't? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's important enough that you may need to go to that meeting and not, I mean, the delegation? I'm, no, I don't. Okay. Um, I, for, I think that the, the members of the Regional Planning Council are going to all oppose the RPCs. The okay. I, I, I don't believe that anybody would go along with the RPCs recommendation. Um, there's such a dissension in that group right now. There's, and four out of the six counties have opted out. I mean, and over the next eight months or so, all of these counties are going to be one by one falling off. So did Charlotte? Oh yes, Charlotte, yes, yes. 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 Oh, they so they're not months. even attending because I thought it was well, like a year they were going to go for twelve months. They'll, and they'll attend the meetings, but um, but they have they've expressed that they're going to withdraw. Um, okay. So we have Sarasota, Charlotte, uh, Lee, and Collier that have all withdrawn. So that only leaves Glades and Hendry County. Hard to believe that the organization is going to succeed if, if they don't have all those funds next year. So um, anyway, I, I just wanted to bring this up as something that um, we'll keep an eye on. I mean, we don't we don't pay for our seat. Um, the county pays for our seat, and, and we get a seat because we're the only incorporated city in the county. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we attend as as a member, a voting member of that organization. I, I don't believe that they're going to get support for the, the resolutions that they're they're trying to get approved. I don't believe that they will. Okay, is that it? Mm -hmm. Anything? Um, I want to thank you all for be attending the Pickleplex groundbreaking yesterday. It was a, a great event and a lot of energy around that and the team is very excited and it got, they got a lot of um, um, recommendations from people about potential fundraising donors and things like that out of it. So that's really good too. Um, so we're you know, moving forward. Um, also, um, the registrations for our city managers, upcoming city managers tour bicycle ride on the morning of December the 2nd is online now. So, um, and it's only $15 if you register now. Um, so you can go ride around the city with, with Howard and help raise money to, for the new mural. 
that we're still, I, I think we're still trying to get the approval for under F the bridge, unless I haven't heard that we've got the approval from FDOT yet, so. For? The, the mural? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um, so anyway, the planned mural for underneath the southbound 41 bridge. Um, and then that night on uh, the second is the uh, annual Southern Supper um, and with the, with the customary cuisine of, uh, of the day. Um, and so um, with um, mullet and um, uh, it's all the other stuff, all the fixings as Gussie Baker would say. So um, it's $55 and I'm selling tickets and I would be happy to put tickets in everyone's pocket. <laughs> so um, just see me. This is a fundraiser for the Punta Gorda Historic, no, the Punta Gorda History Center, which is the new history center out on Gray Street. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you, Gary. Uh, just two items. Uh, uh, the uh, Peace River Botanical and Sculpture uh, will be having their phase one and phase two opening tomorrow and the following day. Uh, a number of us will be attending it. I just want to emphasize that this is, even though it's not in Punta Gorda proper, it is part of the Punta Gorda uh, uh, atmosphere, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and in our service area. Uh, they would like to be, quite frankly, if anybody can help them, be incorporated and annexed into Punta Gorda itself. Uh, so with that said, uh, that along with pickleball, there's a lot of things other than just the harbor that we're, we're having to offer, and it's just going to be growing. We're going to be uh, a very vibrant community. Uh, I also just want to give my fellow council persons a heads up, uh, probably early part of next year, I will be uh, approaching you. I've had several discussions with staff about when our um, tablets are retired. There's uh, over 300 homeless students in the Charlotte County, a number of them attending Punta Gorda schools. There's been a new organization. They just received their 501C status. Uh, details with name and everything will follow, but uh, I'll be looking to ask you to, uh, rather than to scrap our tablets as normally would be done uh, to um, uh, ask you if, for your support in donating them to, uh, to the homeless uh, students of the Port Charlotte County. So I'm just giving you a heads up. You'll see all the details and it'll be all, all done properly. But I do, I do need your help on it. And that's it. I wish you all a great week. Okay. Citizens comments, any topic, please make your way to this podium. State your name. You have three minutes. Good afternoon. Hi. My name is Kathy Getz. I'm a resident of the Historic District. And I, along with Eunice Wiley, a very respected member of this community for many years, are coming together as to uh, be the co-chairs of the new Dis District 1 Historic District HOA. Um, with Jaha and Kim Devine are going to be our um, mentors and help with this. But it is, um, it is our goal to bring together this part of the city, which is the harbor side, the hometown. <laughs> so um, we, I would appreciate all your help and guidance as we begin this venture. Martha has been a, a, a real help to me here. Um, Mrs. Wiley wasn't available to be here today, so she's helping me out. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for Thanks. stepping up. That's awesome. I'm Debbie Carey, I'm the president of the Punta Gorda Isle Civic Association. And as you know, in July, we lost our beloved Ray Rose, our government liaison. And I would just like to introduce our new um, appointed, and he will be filling the vacancy for the next two years. Uh, John Miller is going to be our new government liaison. John and his wife, Terry, have lived here full time since 2003. And if I listed all the volunteer things John has done for our community, I'd exceed my three minutes. But needless to say, he's been very active with the Civic Association. His measured approach has made him a valuable member of my team. He comes to this position with the full confidence of our board. And I would urge you to welcome him to your group. Thank you, John. Thank you. John Miller, I didn't know I had to say anything, but <laughs> I've been coming, you might have noticed the last four or five meetings, and I'm impressed with you all. Uh, you're really looking forward for this community, and I appreciate that. I must say, so far, I've 
haven't stayed through all the meetings. They are too long. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand you have important things to do. But I look forward to working with you and to bringing our interests more clearly to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks for stepping up. Harvey Goldberg, uh, <coughs> Pana Horta. Just two quick comments. When we're uh, looking at feedback, seeing the feedback uh, from the Aqua study uh, and the presentation, when they talk about sense of community, that's what we have. And this DOC program that Lynn has shepherded along with the Boaters Alliance about people volunteering their docks for, for, for uh, people who have seawalls in, in distress, it's just another great example of what our community is all about. <clears throat> and along those lines too, we talk about millennials. Um, I have friends who have millennial children <laughs> and they've moved to large cities like New York and, and Chicago and Atlanta and San Francisco. And over the years, they're coming back because they've had the big city experience and they like the small town charm, culture, hominess of, of, of towns like Punta Gorda. And so there is a shift and that shift is real uh, about millennials wanting more of a sense of community than this. So thank you. Citizens comments, any topic? Anybody else? Seeing none, we are adjourned.